Morning everybody, welcome to Doing Church Differently this morning at St Paul's Church in Worcester. Special welcome to our friends from Life Church uh, in Redditch and Droitwich AOG, it's great to have you with us. Special welcome to all our children, hi kids, hope you're still enjoying time off school. If you normally come to Kids Zone on a Sunday at church at St Paul's in Worcester, you should have received an activity pack in the post this week. And Debbie says, if you haven't had one, can you please inf uh, email info at stpaulschurch.co.uk and she will make sure you get one this week. You need to get your hands on one of those. They are really cool. The helpline is available too for everybody. 07798775. 329. That is for you to use if you need help doing shopping or you need medicines collected or even if you just want someone to pray with you. If you do, we will get a member of the prayer team to contact you and you can pray together over the phone. We also would love some volunteers. So if you're under 70 and you're healthy and you're able to help us with shopping, um, please do let the helpline know as well because we are looking for people to help support other members of the community. Children, all of you from all three churches, we would love your help. If you can create this week a wonderful picture of, I don't know, your favourite Bible story or your favourite Bible verse or even just something that makes you smile, will you send them in to info at stpaulschurch.co.uk and we can use those on our Facebook page and maybe in our service next week. And also, if you'd like to make a recording of you saying prayers, then we could use those too. So get those in, info at stpaulschurch.co.uk. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 and 8 says this, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Lord, we pray this morning that as we come before you, we would be people of faith who are prepared to dig deep into you. God, in these really unsettling times, help us to draw on you for our strength and our courage and maybe be people who continue to bear fruit right now in our communities and our lives together. Amen. song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever save worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you and holy there is no one like you there is none besides you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart lead me in your love to those around me Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Holy 
There is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. And I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken yes I will build my life Upon your love It is a firm foundation And I will put my trust In you alone And I will not be shaken There is no one like you, there is none besides you. Open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart. Lead me in your love to those around me. Holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those who This morning, we will be taking communion. So if you want to pause the video and prepare things, either with some grape juice or wine and some bread, get ready and join us later in the service for communion. Thank you. God bless you. Well, good morning. It's so good to be with you online again today and welcome to my kitchen and it's so good that we can gather together and we can still have this shared experience last week i loved seeing all the different comments come up as people were saying hello to one another and connecting with one another and for me it's really important that we stay connected more than ever and you can do that through online uh, i did have a bit of a laugh someone made a comment that they like the way i say the word unprecedented now, I don't know why that's funny, but I, one thing I am praying is that God is going to use this time to do an unprecedented move in people's hearts right across the earth. And I hope you join me in that prayer. Big shout out to St. Paul's Church in Worcester, Pastor Paul and Steph Boyd there. Uh, they're joining in on this message today. So we love you and we believe in you. Keep going and doing great things there. Do you know, as I've been processing this time, I'm glad and grateful that last year at Connect Church, we spent the whole year talking about the theme of certainty. 
how to live with certainty in uncertain times. And of course, when we presented that theme and spoke through that, it was on the backdrop of the craziness of Brexit. And so we wanted to speak into, with all the things that were changing and going on around us, all the uncertainty that existed around us, how do we live with certainty? And as followers of Jesus, what we spoke about was having this hope as an anchor for our soul. That no matter what was happening around us, we had that sure and firm foundation. And Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19 was our key scripture. And it says this, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. That an anchor's mass and weight lodges in to that firm, secure, immovable foundation of the earth, of that rock. And as it lodges in, whatever vessel is connected to that anchor, doesn't matter what the storms or the winds or the clouds or the climate that happens around, that it stays firm and secure because it's got that anchor in the rock. And that's the hope I want you and I to have in this time, that we have that sure and firm foundation in Jesus Christ. He's the hope. He's the foundation. He's the rock that we can put our certainty in. So even in these uncertain times, we can be certain in our relationship with Jesus. And that's why we can sing a little louder in the middle of the storm. And today we are in a global pandemic and we are certainly in a storm. It is a fierce storm. It's grey, black clouds. It's penetrating rain. It is gusty winds. It is definitely a major storm. In fact, unless there's people listening and watching today that have journeyed through World War II, this is probably the biggest storm that we've all faced. And it's not just us, it's right across the earth. But we are all in the same boat. We're all navigating this together. And we're all going to get through the storm together. And the story I want to share with you today, my message title with you today is the storm is not your story. The storm is not your story. And it's a story found in the Bible in Acts chapter 27, 28. And it's a crazy story about a storm. The main character is the Apostle Paul. And he was someone that was a leader in the early church. And he would travel around telling people all about Jesus. But unfortunately, the Roman leaders at the time didn't like that. Because in the Roman Empire, the emperor was regarded as God. So here's Paul going around telling everyone that, hey, there is, a, there is one God and his son Jesus came to die on the cross and come back to life and he can give life, life eternal. Well, they didn't like that message at all. So he was put in jail, talk about isolation. He was beaten and imprisoned. And so that's where we kind of pick the story up today. And there's a map on your screens which show the journey that Paul went on because he was on trial for his life and he had to stand trial before Caesar. So he had to travel from Jerusalem all the way up to Rome. Now we would look at that map today and we would think, wow, that sounds like a great Mediterranean summer cruise. Apologies for those that have had to cancel holidays. I don't mean to tease you. But if we looked at this in the natural, it would look amazing from Jerusalem to Lebanon up into modern day Turkey, then down into Crete, Crete along then to Malta, Malta to Sicily, Sicily up to Rome. Wow, sounds like an awesome summer holiday. But this was no pleasure cruise for Paul whatsoever. And that's where we pick the story up. After they arrived in Crete, they journeyed from Crete. And as they were about halfway between Crete and Malta in the Adriatic Sea, well, the storm hits them. Out of nowhere, what was normal, what was routine, what was plain sailing, all of a sudden upon the horizon comes this storm. And isn't that the same for all of us? And certainly through this coronavirus, things were just traveling along normal. We were plain sailing, but all of a sudden, the storm has hit us. And this is what happened to the Apostle Paul. But what I want to encourage you with today is two things that the Apostle Paul took courage from in the middle of of his storm and we pick the story up in Acts 27 verse 20 
It says, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, the storm continued raging. Who knows, the storm is raging at the moment. And we finally, this is the sailors, there were 276 people on board. Finally, they'd given up all hope of being saved. And I really want to encourage you, hope is such an important thing. We've already heard it's the anchor for our soul. Let's not lose hope through this time. And so the sailors had lost hope, but Paul stood up in verse 22 and he said, Let me urge you, keep your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. And you know, that's my prayer for you, that no one will be lost through this storm and through this journey. We're praying that protection of God, the covering of God over you and the grace of God over you. Why did Paul have this incredible courage in the middle of his storm? Well, verse 23, it says, Last night, an angel of the God that I belong to and the God that I serve, he came and stood right beside me. He said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. For God has graciously given you the lives of all the men who sail with you. So keep your courage, men, he said. I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we need to run aground on an island. The story goes on and they did run aground on the island of Malta. And they did make their way up to Sicily. But finally, in chapter 28, verse 14, they came to Rome. They made it all the way from Jerusalem up to Rome. They made it through the storm. And I really want to encourage you today that the storm is not your story. The storm is a part of the story, but it's not the story. And just two thoughts with you today. The first thing is that God's story for your life is bigger than the storm. God's story, the big picture of your life is bigger than the storm. And we see that in the Apostle Paul's life. The big story in this whole uh, story of Paul's life is actually that God wants to get him from Jerusalem to Rome to preach the good news of Jesus. That's the big story. We see that start in chapters 19, 20, 21, when Paul first makes his way to Jerusalem. Then 22, 23, right through to 26, when Paul is on trial for his life. And of course, then through these chapters where he gets a storm. So we see for nine chapters in the book of Acts... The story of God for Paul is about him getting from Jerusalem to preach the good news in Rome. The storm was just a part of a chapter in nine chapters. And I really want to encourage you, yes, this storm is full on, but it's just a part of the story of God for our lives. And God is before the storm, he's after the storm, and he's in the middle of the storm, and he'll get us through the storm shall pass. Meteorologically, it's impossible for a storm to last forever. It will pass. And God's story for your life is so much bigger. And we see that in Acts 23 when Paul was in prison for preaching about Jesus. It says, 23 verse 11, That night while he was in prison, the Lord stood near Paul and he said, Take courage. I love how God always says, tells us to take courage. As you've testified about me in Jerusalem, you must go to Rome. God's story was to get Paul to Rome. And there's a Rome in your life. There are things beyond the storm that God has for you. And he'll get you through the storm and he'll fulfill his story for your life. Amen. One of the th stories that has really encouraged me through this time is a story of a pastor in a church in Wuhan in China. And this is the epicenter of the COVID-19 where it out, where it the outbreak occurred. And this is what Pastor Lee, the pastor of the church in Wuhan, China, says this. The coronavirus makes it impossible for his church to have their usual gatherings. The whole church now benefits by meeting together virtually. This epidemic didn't cut down our meetings. It's the opposite. I think after this, many church members will be willing to communicate more and share with each other more. Pastor Lee said this, I think this is bringing us closer than ever before. We pray, we share information, we make decisions together. This virus cannot stop us. Come on. How awesome is that? There's a church in Wuhan in China that's come through the storm. It's on the other side of the storm, but it's now stronger on the other side of the storm. And that's what I'm believing for all our lives. And then the final thought today 
I want you to be encouraged today that Jesus is going to stand beside you in the storm. Jesus is going to speak to you in the middle of the storm. And we see that in this story in Paul's life. Verse 23 of Acts 27, it says, Last night, an angel of the God whom I belong to, whom I serve, the God that you belong to, you belong to him. He, he, you are his. The Bible says that nothing can snatch you out of the palm of his hand. He came and he stood beside me and he said, don't be afraid, Paul. I love that God uses Paul's name. Don't be afraid, Paul. And today I really want you to be encouraged because God is saying the same thing. Jesus is standing next to you in the storm right now. In this time, I want you to draw close to Jesus and Jesus will stand with you. He is standing with you and he is wanting to speak to you. And I want to encourage you today. God says the same thing. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, Michelle. Do not be afraid, Sharon. Do not be afraid, Joshua. Do not be afraid, Andy. Whatever your name is, God knows your name. And he's saying to us today, do not be afraid, Paul. And so we can be convinced, we can take courage that Jesus is going to stand with us in the storm. He's going to speak to us in the storm. He'll give us direction through the storm and he'll give us strength through the storm. There were times where Jesus did calm the storm. We see that in the Gospels. Jesus spoke to the storms because he has all authority and all power. He created the heavens and the earth. He creates the atmosphere creates the atmosphere that the storm lives in he created the winds the waters he created everything he has all authority to calm that storm but if he's not going to calm the storm i can guarantee you this he's going to stand with you through the storm and he'll get you through the storm and the truth is we've all faced storms before and we're all going to face storms after but in every single storm that jesus is going to stand with you and he'll speak to you and that's the anchor of the hope that we can have today that is in his name, Jesus. And I really want to encourage you. Press in, hear his voice, trust him, hear his instruction, and know that he's standing with you. So today, I want you to receive faith right where you are right now. Just receive an impartation of the spirit of faith that God's story for your life is bigger than the storm. That he's going to stand with you in the middle of the storm and he'll speak to you in the storm. And that you can have this hope that is an anchor for your soul, a firm foundation in the rock of Jesus Christ that doesn't matter what happens around you, you have that certainty in uncertain times. Amen. Amen. I would love the opportunity to pray with you today. I said that God's story for our life is bigger than the storm. And certainly it was for Paul. God wanted to get him to Rome. That was the biggest story of his life. We don't know how long Paul was in Rome for. There's different theories. But we do know that Paul lost his life for the sake of Jesus under Emperor Nero. And his story of his life came to an end there, or certainly the story of his life on the earth. But the good news today, and in the climate of the storms we're currently in, this is the greatest news that we can have, is that because of Jesus dying on the cross and coming back to life, we now know that our story doesn't end here on earth. It's actually a never-ending story. I know I'm showing my age a little bit right now, but I remember a movie in the 80s when I was growing up called The Never-Ending Story. And that's the reality and the truth and the hope that we can hold on to today. Jesus did die on the cross for our sins, for our weaknesses, for our mistakes, for our human imperfection. But the good news is he didn't stay dead. He didn't stay in the tomb. God raised him back to life. On the third day, he came back to life. And death and sickness and disease, it was defeated in that moment of power when Jesus rose from the grave. And in that moment, the story now never ends. Jesus comes to give life, life to the full and life eternal. The Bible says that anyone... Anyone who believes in Jesus can have eternal life, the hope and the assurance of eternal life. And I really would love to pray with you today that you would open another chapter in your life, that you would invite Jesus into your boat, that you would put your faith and trust in Jesus. And maybe you've been 
tossed around by the winds of what's going on. But today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to put your faith and trust in Jesus. You can have your sins forgiven and you can have the hope of eternal life. It's the best news. It's the good news of the gospel. So I'd love to pray with you today. And I just ask that you repeat this prayer after me and make Jesus the anchor of your soul. So just repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. They are removed. They're taken away. And I believe that you came back to life. And now the story of eternity is a never-ending story. By faith, I receive forgiveness. By faith, I receive the hope of eternal life. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Be my anchor. In Jesus' name, amen. (laughs) Amen. God bless you. If you prayed that prayer either for the first time or, or you're making a recommitment to Jesus, we'd love to know. Just let us know so we can help you on the journey of getting to know Jesus. It's the best adventure you can go on. And finally, just let me pray for all of us that Jesus will be standing with us in this storm and speaking to us. Amen. So, Father God, we thank you that you sent your son Jesus and the promise of the story today that our story is not about the storm, that Jesus, your promise is that you will stand with us. You're standing with us right now. And I pray for every household out there that you would just speak faith, speak courage into every person in the middle of this storm, that they would know that you're standing next to them. Father, I pray the blessing and the grace and the peace of Jesus Christ over every household tuning in today. Father, I pray your protection and your grace and your hand of covering over every household. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Here is love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood. When the prince of life our ransom shed for us his precious blood, who his love will not remember who can cease to sing his praise he can never be forgotten throughout heaven's eternal days On the mount of crucifixion, fountains open deep and wide. Through the floodgates of God's mercy, flowed a vast and gracious tide. Grace and love like mighty rivers poured in and from above and heaven's peace and perfect justice kissed a guilty world in love grace and love like mighty rivers Poured in says from above Heaven's peace and perfect justice Kissed a guilty world in love
Hi everyone, it's really good to be with you this morning in unity and purpose and we recognise at the moment so much has changed for us and I just want to share uh, something that we read this morning by Matt Picardo and he says that everything is being cancelled and we certainly know that don't we? Football matches, the Olympic Games, cinemas, theatres, hairdressers, hairdressers, so many things, holidays, you know, we were due to go away and so many people going and wanted to go away. Flights and cruises being cancelled. So we know there are cancellations everywhere and we're being asked to stay at home. But Mac Ricardo says, but I can tell you the one thing that has not and will not be cancelled is God will never cancel his promise to take care of us. That is such great news for us, the people of God. That's my word, not my Picardo. Do not interpret the presence of problems as the absence of God. God has promised, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. He is with us and he is for us. He offers us peace in the face of uncertainty and hope in exchange for heaviness. The question of this crisis is simply this. What is God saying to us right now? Among the answers must be the promise that is from the reading of Matthew 11, verse 28. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. That is a promise. There's no what ifs. That is the promise. And so as we take communion, as we turn to him today together at the Church St. Paul's, let us remember there are people everywhere in different places where they feel their freedom being challenged, there's those that are poorly, those living together who may really struggle being together, and those with young children, those who have relatives in hospital and poorly, and those, you know, who are suffering, not from corona, but those who are suffering from other things, cancers and needing treatment for their chronic pain, and actually it's put on hold for many. And we want to come and take communion together and reflect on what God is saying to us. And if you want to at this point, before we take it, you just want to reflect. You can pause, remember at any time, just to remember what the cross means to us, that it gave us an exchange. It gave an exchange from death into life. And it may not feel that, and someone said to me only yesterday, do you know the positive from this and the blessings I see right now? Is God gave us a week of sunshine and blue sky. Wouldn't it have been awful if we'd have had a week where it started off grey? What a blessing. And I said to her, isn't it great that you can see that? Isn't it great that you can see the positive, the blessings of Christ through this? But let us take communion right now and consider those things, the goodness of God through this, and what he has promised us right now through his blood and his body that was broken for us. Reading from 1 Corinthians 11, verse 25. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you for your blood shed for us. And we do this in remembrance of you, of your sacrifice for us, of your love for us, and of your care for us. Amen. In the same way, he took the bread, saying, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
Father, we thank you for your body, which was broken for us. Lord, for the sacrifice that you made in the cleansing of our sin. That, Lord, you experienced loneliness, isolation and pain on behalf of us. As we take communion today, we turn to you, remembering that you will never forsake nor leave us. And we pray, Father, that as we turn to you, we would indeed know your peace and your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you alone. And I will trust in you alone. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will lead me home. He guides my ways in righteousness and he anoints my head with oil and my cup it overflows with joy I feast on his pure delight and I will trust in you alone and I will trust in you alone for your endless mercy follows me your goodness will lead me home and though I walk the darkest part I will not fear the evil one For you are with me and your rod and star By the comfort I need to know And I will trust in you alone and I will trust in you alone For your endless mercy follows me Your goodness will lead me home Your goodness will lead me home well that's given us something to think about hasn't it this week as we go through whatever life holds for us and um, children your story in your packs this week that debbie's got ready for you is the story of daniel in the lion's den and I think Daniel probably felt very, very alone when he was in that pit surrounded in lions. But he got on his knees and he prayed and he asked God to just protect him. I think he was probably praising him too. And look what God did. So this week, as we go through whatever we go through, let's remember what we've heard this morning and think of Daniel on his own in that place, lions bearing down on him and yet God delivered him. And that is the truth for us today. Whatever happens, God will deliver. He walks with us. He never leaves us. He is faithful and he's got you. Lord God, we just thank you this day for your presence with us, for the, your spirit that just comes and gives us peace and joy, even in the middle of feeling sometimes like we're in a, a pit of lions. 
Lord, we just thank you and we just commit this week to you. We ask you, God, to bless our families wherever they are, where, whatever they're doing in, in this time to protect them, we pray, and give us strength and courage to face each day with you. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Amen. Can I just remind you before we finish and close that if you can, and I know this will be difficult for some losing jobs and income, but if you can, can you please keep tithing? We need finance, obviously, to keep doing what we're doing. And we really, really do appreciate your support in this way. The details should be on the screen for you now. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye.